Yeah, that's true. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is how I see it, man. Money and, you know, making money, investing money, growing money, it's all a game, right? And if, you know, you look at sports, the best way you can learn how to, to play a game is to actually be in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, and for generations, we were locked out of the game. You know, you got redlining, you got, uh, uh, you know, unfair housing uh, loans and things like that. So we were locked out of the games. You know, if you look like you and I, you couldn't walk into a bank and say, hey, let me, you know, get some of your mutual funds. Let me get an account. You couldn't do that. Right. So just a couple of generations ago, we just started getting into the game and they've had five, six, seven generations of being able to play the game. So, uh, you know, as we start to play it, we start to learn it more. You know, the game is all about who's going to compete the hardest. And so I think as we get the knowledge and begin to share the knowledge, we start to be able to compete and play the game at a super high level. So that's just kind of how I look at it, man. You know, yeah, we, 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 we're behind, but we can catch up. We can do it. And, and it's all about, like you said, it's all about education. It's all about financial literacy. Welcome to Young the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And you all know the premise of our show is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree, right? And we focus on doing that by sharing stories, strategies, and successes. And, and I'm, I'm really excited today. As, as I get excited every time I, I get the opportunity just to, just to be on the mic and and, and share the platform. Uh, but man, this gentleman that, that we're bringing forward today, I, I, the, the more I started to look and, and learn about him and, and just go into his content, I was like, this brother is multifaceted to say the least, right? So uh, man, w w w without, without further ado, man, this, this gentleman, he's, man, he's, a, he's a father, he's a husband, he, he, he's, he's in the NFL as well, and he does so many other things. But we're we not, we not even going get, to get, get caught up on that because we're going to let him just share what he wants to share with us. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and welcome uh, Mr. Kari Blessing Game. Kari, how we doing, brother? How we doing? Hey, man. Appreciate you for having me, man. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, man. Mo mo most definitely, man. Mo most most definitely. Most definitely. Gl glad, glad, glad to have you on the show. But Kari, man, I, I want to kick it over to you. And, and I want to give you the opportunity because I, I didn't catch it all. But like, for if this is the people's first opportunity getting connected with you or or their first introduction to you, like, please j just go ahead and give a quick snapshot, you know, for the for the people who who may not be aware because they they somewhere sleep tripping. But but help us out, okay? Kari, help us okay. Out. So, uh, Kari Blasting Game, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, grew up there, you know, my whole life. Grew up playing sports in school, whatnot. Uh, Graduated from high school, Buckhorn High School, went to Vanderbilt University, uh, majored in medicine, health and society, and um, got my master's in leadership and organizational performance from Vanderbilt University. Uh, after that, I went to the Tennessee Titans, played my first three years in the league there, uh, just played my fourth year with the Chicago Bears. Um, yeah, and, and you know, that's that's me educationally and athletically and, and on the side have a podcast called Business of Athletes, where we uh, take different profiles of different athletes, college, professional, and uh, just talk about what they're doing off the field uh, through business. So uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. I play fullback. I got a wife named Maya, a baby named Jordan. Uh, she's five months now. So yeah, man, that's a little bit about me. Fair enough, man. C congrats, C congrats on on the new bundle, man. C congrats on the new bundle. That's, that's a thank you, thing. thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I appreciate man. it. That's, that's that's a beautiful thing. So you said you 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 majored in in medicine, health science. Like when 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 you initially were going through school, like what were you thinking? You were what what was the plan for you with that particular degree? The plan was to was to be a doctor. I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to be like Myron Rowe. I'm sure you've. I'm sure you're familiar with Myron Rowe, the uh, the guy from New Jersey, went to Florida mm -hmm. State. Rhodes Scholar. Now he went to, I think it was Harvard Medical School, and now he's a neuroscience neurosurgeon. So I uh, really liked him. My mother was a, a podiatrist or is a podiatrist. Um, so I've been kind of close to you know, the, you know, biology and the sciences my whole life. So it was just really interested in that. And so I started off in medicine, health, and society, which is typically the pre med track at Vanderbilt, and. Um, and yeah, man, so I started off there doing the pre-med thing. I didn't quite go the whole pre-med route, ran into some courses while I was playing ball and decided to 
focused more on ball. So I went the business administration of uh of healthcare route. Uh, so yeah, man, that that was the initial plan was to was to be a uh, a surgeon. Didn't know what kind, but I wanted to be a surgeon, and then uh, transition over to like the business of healthcare side. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm. Cause I, yeah. Because I, I mean, I heard you break that down. I was like, huh. Okay. Well, what would you do with that? So it is like, is that something you consider in later, maybe, or it's just like, nah. We we focusing more so on 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 the business of, of sports. Uh, man. You know, I got the degree. And you know, it's it's a possibility. I'm not I'm not weighing anything out. I'm not I'm not checking anything off the list right now, man. But it's a possibility. But you know, I I definitely am diving more into the business and finance side of things right now, especially you know playing ball, just kind of building those interests and those hobbies. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay, so when like when 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 was this interest first? identified or, or first struck like especially around just the like the finance piece because i see i i got you on, on twitter and i you know i see you talking about stocks and you know I, I see you retweeting and sharing other like financial tidbits and you even doing episodes on the podcast about about finance so when when did this i guess passion arise and and what was it that that, that brought that to the forefront well, I think I've always been interested in business at a, at a certain level or, you know, when you say business, making money, like everybody has that story of being a kid, going to school, selling some candy or doing something like that. So, <laughs> you know, I got I got that story, too. Right. Like I, I did that. and I've always kind of been interested in it. But, you know, my dad was real huge on on investing in uh, personal finance and he really just drilled that into me and my sister. So, you know, by him making us read different uh you know, different magazines, different articles and things like that. Excuse me. Uh, you know, I kind of just, you know, learned about it as I as I was going, you know, as I was going through school and then just different experiences uh, pushed me farther into the knowledge and into, you know, the interest. So, you know, one time when I was in college, I got a, you know, a cost of cost of attendance check is what they called it at the time. And I probably blew about maybe fifteen hundred dollars on clothes, maybe a thousand on clothes. And it was cool. You know, I had I had a little savings. I was like, man, whatever, I'm going to blow it. And I was getting fresh, you know, saying it was it was it was cool. But then the next semester or the next year, I was like, all right, well, I can't be wearing the same fits. I got to do it all again. And I was like, "Ah, I don't I don't know if I really want to want to, you know, continue to do that because, you know, I had different things coming up that I had to pay for. I pledged in college and things like that. So, uh, you know, that was one thing, you know, I had a you know, a little mutual fund that I had put some gradu- graduation money in, uh, you know, did that. But I think I think the main thing was was going to the going to the league uh, in 2021. I ended up getting hurt. Right. So uh, I had purchased a home. I, I'm married at this time. I had purchased a home and uh, I got hurt for about four or five weeks. And, you know, I just had a lot of kind of anxiety around like, OK, if I left the league today, what would my money look like? Where is it going? Where is it headed? What can I project out? And so I was uh, I was looking at my you know financial advisor and uh, the things that he was putting me in. I just kind of did a deep dive on it, started looking at expense ratios, low ratios, the different funds that he had me in. And, and through my research, I realized that I could outperform him if I just had the mixture of a few uh, of a few things, a long enough time horizon um, and, and just patience. Right. And putting my money in index funds, right? So, uh, so through that, I ended up leaving him. Uh, I manage my own money now as, uh, from the investing side, and you know, I just I read something about it every day. Like whether it's an article, uh, I got a stack of books that my wife bought me for Christmas because uh, you know I talk about this all the time, so she knows it's one of my biggest hobbies. So she bought me a stack of books that I, I'm buried in right now. Uh, so, so I mean, it was it was really just a a bunch of different uh, experiences that pushed me into this hobby. It made me realize that it was super important because, you know, at the end of the day, nobody's going to care about my financial picture and my, my money more than me. So uh, I wanted to know as much as I could about it. Man, man, that's good, man. And shout out to your pops, man, for, you know, get, getting you to read the articles and reading the books and, and everything Absolutely. like that. Because you, I mean, you know, too too often and i mean we, we can just see it across the landscape of sports but even outside of sports the like the fact that financial literacy is something that 
more often than not that other communities are more so aware of. Yeah. And you know that and, and they take advantage of it. Yeah, that's true. But here's the thing, here's the thing, and this is how I see it, man. Money and you know, making money, investing money, growing money, it's all a game, right? And if you know, you look at sports, the, the best way you can learn how to, to play a game is to actually be in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, and for generations we were locked out of the game. You know, you got redlining, you got uh uh you know unfair housing uh loans and things like that so we were locked out of the games you know if you look like you and i you couldn't walk into a bank and say hey let me you know get some of your mutual funds let me get an account you couldn't do that right so just a couple of generations ago we just started getting into the game and they've had five six seven generations of being able to play the game so uh you know as we start to play it we start to learn it more you know the game is all about who's going to compete the hardest. And so I think as we get the knowledge and begin to share the knowledge, we start to be able to compete and play the game at a super high level. So that's just kind of how I look at it, man. You know, yeah, we, 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 we're behind, but we can catch up. We can do it. And, and it's all about, like you said, it's all about education. It's all about financial literacy. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Spe- speaking of financial literacy, man, speaking of financial okay. literacy, I, I was scrolling down the, down the old timeline the other day on, on Twitter and then I scroll. Then I hopped over to Instagram, and then I saw a photo of you and and and, and these two gentlemen. You know, <laughs> I, I, I think they they look real casual. They had on like little little sports jacket, little track jacket, whatever it was. And I was like, hold on, I've seen those guys before, and it was you. And you know, shout shout out to shout out to Troy, shout out to Rashad. That the guys over there are earn your leisure, man. So so you you having this passion and doing your research and doing your due diligence over the years and and learning finance then y'all ended up sitting down and having a conversation Corey, man walk, walk us through man how did how did this come about man break it down for the people break break it down for the people man man so uh, i'm on the financial literacy committee for the nflpa the nflpa is the the union the uh, the players union for the nfl and so you know we're having a meeting you know talking about different things ways to get guys more engaged with the uh with the with the material that we have and so you know we're just talking through it and and you know eyl those guys they have a huge following that you know they're huge for the culture and you know getting them out to the super bowl was was you know just a great idea that that we had as a part of the committee as a part of the committee excuse me and um you know so when they came out um my agency ended up putting me on a list of guys that was headed out to the Super Bowl, and they, uh, the people at the NFLPA, saw my name on the list and was like, "Hey, he's on the financial literacy committee. He's got these things going on. So let's see if he can do an episode with EYL." So that's kind of how it came about. You know, it's definitely one of those uh, one of those God things, man. You know, when you when you get an opportunity like that, because you know, not to be self, not to be you know, overly humble or anything like that, but like my my pro, my my podcast doesn't have the following yet, you know. I haven't, you know, amassed that following to to be able to be on the same platform as those guys. But to be on the on the same platform to interview with those guys and be able to you know talk financial literacy and know what I'm talking about, it was it was a great experience, man. It was it, it was really cool just to meet them, and, and then it was cool to meet the guys behind the scenes, the guys uh, Mike and AB and Vince. You know they. Uh, they run a lot of the business side of the podcast and they were just being able to pick their brains and, and, you know, talk to them about what they do and how they monetize. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was overall, man, it was just a great experience. So that's really how it came about. It was through the NFLPA financial literacy committee. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was, it was awesome, man. Cause I, I watch those guys all the time. I watch them every Monday, uh, Troy Rashad and uh, uh, the master investor Ian, Mm-hmm. as he's called on uh, Instagram. So, so man, yeah, it was, it was, it was just one of those things, man. I was just, I was just really blessed to, to be able to sit down and have a conversation with him. Yeah, man. Shout out to you for, for being in position though, because you know, you know, if you wasn't on the committee, Hey, you know, but, but you through, you know, taking the time to learn, taking the time to, to really dive in and taking the time to, to really, you know, help out some people and, and be in that position. I, I think that really is dope, man. I, I think that really I is I appreciate dope. it. Yeah, man, it's all about opportunity, man. You know, the platform of the NFL is a great one. And, you know, being able to, you know, a lot of guys don't want to be a part of the NFL PA or be a rep and go to the meetings and things like that. But I've always been interested in, in stuff like that. Uh, so when I got the opportunity to go, 
you know, I just wanted to get involved in things that they offered that I was interested in. So when it, when it came up, when it came up, I just, I just took it, man. And it, it led to all of these opportunities. So I'm definitely blessed to have got these opportunities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I've seen, you know, from, from, from here, hearing, hearing other interviews that, that, that I've heard you on, uh, I, I've always heard you make mention of, you know, that, that, that you've worked with this person or you joined this person's community or gotten this person's course. When, when did you realize the, the true value of it, like investing in yourself and, and investing in just like ultimately growing your, growing you? Like when, when, when did that become like, like a focus for you? Because I, for, from the interviews I've seen, it seems like you don't pull, you like, nah, I, I mean, I've tapped in with that person. I'm going to tap in with this person. Like, when did you realize it's like, I need to increase me? Yeah, man. It was, it was when that time around 2021, when I got hurt, man. And I, and I started doing a deep dive on my own finances. It was, that was, that was really the, the catalyst that got me uh, interested in, in doing those things, man. And so, as I'm just looking things up, you know, shout out to the Instagram algorithm, right? Like I just started finding, I just started finding people and just kind of praying for discernment and, and, you know, parsing through what was, what was good information and what was just noise. Right. And so as I started finding courses, I always remember these first two, it was Jeremy Schneider's uh, personal finance club. They talked about index investing and target date fund investing. Uh, it was better wallet from Mark. Uh, that was a great, that's a great overall course just for budgeting, investing, tax, taxes. Like it, it, it talks about a lot of those things at a at a basic level and at an advanced level. And you can really just digest it at whatever speed that you're you're interested in. And then EYL also, right? Like I was like I said, I watched Market Mondays every Monday, tapped into a lot of their interviews and, and things like that. So yeah, man, the courses and everything is really just like you said, it's about investing in yourself, right? If I don't have the knowledge, then the more the more money that I do get, if I'm blessed to keep, continue playing in this league, the more people that will come in and ask me for to to invest in things and to to, you know, to join their bank and things like that. And I got to be educated enough to know, like, OK, this is smoke and mirrors and then educated enough to know, OK, this is this is a solid uh, this is a solid idea. This is a solid opportunity because because people will take advantage of you, man. And you got to just really know when when people come at you with these opportunities you gotta know what's gold and you know what's what's just glitter man yeah you make me think of um that that espn documentary they did the 30 for 30 broke man say that's, yeah that's tough and 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 watching that as a you know i can't even remember when i watched it maybe it was college maybe it was high school i don't know but it's like those, those things are scary. Those things are like, oh, this is what can happen to you. So you always want to be prepared, right? But then there's also the other side of the coin of the guys who do it the exact, the right way. The guys who put their money up, the guys who, you know, play, they put their money up, they get the education. And when they're done, they pivot away from the league and they just keep it moving like nothing ever happened, you know? So I feel like as as much as we hear the, the 30 for 30 broke stories, we got to hear the stories of the guys like, like Brandon Copeland, like, you know, uh, uh, Kelvin Beecham, all these guys that are doing great things out, uh, uh, you know, uh, Keith Smith, all these guys that are doing great things on the business side. We got to hear those stories as well. And that's, that's part of the reason why I started my podcast, because, you know, as much as you hear about 30 for 30 broke, as much as you hear about, you know, some advisor running off with somebody's money or, you know, you got to hear the, you got to hear the wins too. Yeah, man. Talk, Talk more about the podcast because I've seen like it's it, it, it's it's been a mixture. I've I've seen you do you, you got you got the interviews, but then also you you'll come back and then you'll break down like some some financial literacy type game and, and you'll break down some other types. So talk talk a little bit more about the podcast. Like what? Well, yeah, I'm gonna let you do that, and I got a follow up question after. I'm gonna let you go ahead. Yeah. So so the business of athletes, man. Where you know we we talk about the business of athletes. That's exactly what it is. From like from every angle that you can think of like what is the business of running an NFL team what is the business of running media through an NFL team what is the business of you know being an NFL player and investing I think all of that is is encompassed in the business so like you said we, we interview people who uh and not just NFL players right uh, we interview people who play college college sports 
and you know have transitioned we interview people who are currently pros and are doing business ventures uh so it's it's multifaceted man it's it's interview style and then like you said we do have the education piece where we just talk about financial literacy the basics you know i hopped on with with my guy Braden cop and he's a financial advisor um in texas right now and um you know we just talked about the basics at, you know it'll surprise you how many people don't know the basics right don't know the foundations and the fundamentals of healthy financial uh of healthy financial activity right so i just felt like you know let's let's talk about it everybody everybody's looking for a place to go get information and one of the things that my dad told me when he starts you know telling me about you know all of these budgeting tools 50 30 20 investing is like the only thing i'm asking you to do is go tell somebody go help somebody and the feeling i got from helping somebody get their finances together and their investing life together the first time was amazing man like it's it's amazing to have somebody call me like hey man i'm up seven eight percent in the down market just because i dollar cost average you know just because i stayed stuck to the plan you know so mm-hmm. if i can do that at scale that'll be that'll be a, a a win for me that's what's up that's what's up so with so so with, with our podcast generally being geared towards student athletes and you know nil is coming in like a freight train some of them are getting a bag bag right some of them Huge. maybe not not as not as big of a bag but like i'm i would just love like if 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 you gave a student athlete a tip like like let's say a student athlete gets five hundred dollars right what would you and and i and i know this is not this is not financial advice right this is you know strictly educational and hypothetical strictly education and this is on a hypothetical basis but if a student athlete got a 500 hundred dollar check what would you suggest that that they do with that 500 dollars uh you know i'll suggest that with a portion of it they save it they put it away they just they just stack it in a you know rainy day fund take half of it and just go put it in a savings account or a money market account that's without even knowing their their situation right like if they already have an emergency fund if they already have some i tell them you know with them being so young go open a roth ira you know what i'm saying go buy some index funds and sit it away do that but then again you got to have balance right you got to understand what they want and that's one of the things that intrigues me so much about financial advising and financial consulting is that when people trust you you can really get into the weeds with them and and look at their financial picture and, and find out what they want and not so much what they want but what they actually need and what they're saying that they're not saying you know what i'm saying i've been i've had the opportunity to 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 talk to a a couple of people about their finances like on the side and and they've trusted me enough to open up the books and, and kind of show me what was going on and a lot of times people are doing a lot better than they than they think they are and this is not the answer to your question no no but, no keep on going uh, you good you good you know, a lot of times people are either doing a lot better than they think they are, or they're, they're farther behind than they think they are. And so it really just starts with a question like, like, what do you want? You know, where are you and what do you want? And then you're able to kind of lay out a plan based on the based on the facts, based on the data that you have and based on the historical data that kind of pushes them in the direction of, of where they want to go. So and, and it's, it feels really good when I'm when I'm able to do that for somebody and kind of lay out a plan. So really what i i tell the you know the college player who got 500 i mean 500 i mean you know save save it away you're gonna need gas money <laughs> you're gonna need to buy eggs eggs 500 to get you what 10 cartons of eggs right now so <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's not that's not enough to make a dent in nothing too crazy but saving and and, and putting a portion away of what you get is always a good answer it's always a good answer you get a check just just stick a portion of it away in a savings account that's always a good answer until you get a clearer picture on what you're trying to do where you're trying to go and what the next you know six to 12 months of your life looks like yeah that makes sense because i i can I'm, I'm not a college athlete anymore but i mean even being an adult i wish i did put some money to the side and save it instead of just cashing out because car right, man if i told you how much i done spent on some of this podcast equipment bro like oh, I'm already knowing. I, I see the mic right there. It looked like a sure. That's a sure right there. Well, not nah, so. So this. So this, so this one ain't a sure, but it look. It look. It look like it, and I and I like it. But bro, I tell when I tell you, 
I got all the equipment. Cause I cause don't get me wrong, we we'll come back to the podcast. We we come back okay. to the podcast. Okay. Uh cause I I I wanna I wanna just 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 hear uh like you know like what's what's your, what's your what, what's your plan with the podcast but bro when i tell you i got about one two three i probably got about five six mics over here right i got two cameras over here i got the i i, I got uh what's it call it i got a focus right and i got the roadcaster pro don't say bro it's 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 it, hey, it's, you know what? it's real bad over here hey look but you got you man it's a learning experience man and you'll, you'll get that back you keep going with this with this along like a long enough time you'll, you'll get that back that's oh, an investment man that's an investment yeah, for sure for sure so speak so speaking of it being an investment are are you aware are you aware that that, that the podcast industry by 2028 is projected to be a hundred billion dollar industry i was not aware of that that is interesting we got to get our slice man hundred hundred billion dollar bro hundred billion dollars I mean, when you think about that, what like podcasting is what it's like talk radio. It's just everybody has a radio station. Everybody has their own radio station. That's what it is. Like if you if you was to say, "All right, we'll be right back." Here's your favorite song from Whoop de Whoop. Like it's, that's what radio is, and we're just talking about the things that we, you know, that we enjoy. So all the the innovations in Instagram, YouTube, things like that, it lets people have their own medium. So. I could definitely see that, see it becoming a hundred billion dollar industry. Yeah, and then and then the best part is this card. This is the best part. By the end of it, so they said podcast then dropped eighty percent, mm-hmm. right? By the end of this year, it's going to drop a little bit more. So I'm excited because more because I've been I've been doing this like six years. Mm, okay. But, more people is about to drop out this thing and the it's opportunity open up. Is, it's, it's, just, it's just gonna seem like more opportunity yeah yeah just based on and, and i'm not even saying nothing like just to kick nobody out it's because people is gonna quit because they just they're like oh man i tried it i thought it was gonna work it didn't do what i wanted to do i got this falling on instagram or this falling on tiktok <sighs> podcasting is the long game a lot of people don't understand that just yet Every anything you invest in is the long game. If it's the right thing, right? Yes, I ain't no ain't there's no there's no get rich quick schemes ever. You know what I'm saying? Those don't work. So I I hear you. I'm with you, right? I'm I'm right with you on that, man. They 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 don't. So so where do you see your podcast? Like in like like let's just say in in five years. Like what 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 do you want the podcast to look like for you in five years? Man, I see it. I see it being. I see it being a show on something like Business Insider or Uninterrupted, like, like background behind the scenes of, of of the business of athletes. Like, you know, we talking with NFL owners, GMs, uh, really running down numbers. Man, I got some lofty goals with this thing, man, and I've had some, some really cool daydreams about what this could be, man. And yeah, man, I. I, I think it I think it could be really interesting because uh people are interested in what goes on behind the scenes. People want to see how the cake is made, right? Mm-hmm. And so if I can if I can show them a nuanced and a and an educated view of how the cake is made and you know inspire some people to to innovate the business and to come in and say, "Oh, you know what? Well, this is how they do it. Well, maybe we could do it this way." And now somebody gets gets a new idea because of my podcast or because of my show. Right, it transforms from just a podcast to a show, right? Uh, but yeah, man, I, I see it. I see it being limitless, man. I, I, I don't think because wherever money's being made, there's a story behind that, right? And mm. and there's 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 tension and there's push and pull and there's, you know, people drawing up contracts and, you know, so it's it's a game and it's a game and the game of finance and the game of business, in my opinion, can be just as interesting as you know knocking heads on sunday so Mm. if you if you if you tell the story the right way and if you you illustrate the picture of what's really going on behind the scenes i think people would be really interested in that like look at the show uh succession and i think it's on uh i think it's on like hbo max or something like that Mm -hmm. it's a show about uh you know a fictional company waystar royco and the succession plan and the business and 
like, it's a really popular show. People love that. You know, you mm-hmm. look at uh, you look at Business Insider and all these other different pages. You look at EYL, all these all these pages that have built up followers because people want to know how business is done, right? They they want to know how business is done. So if I can show you how the business of of, of athletes is done, the business of, of football, the business of basketball, the business of you know the MLB, the business of an agency, the business of media behind sports. If I can if I can get in and show you how those things are done, then I think it can be really interesting. I think it can be uh I think it can be big, man. So that's that's kind of that's kind of what I've been daydreaming on and seeing, man. And I think I think as long as I keep going, the 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 sky's the limit. Yeah, man. I mean I don't disagree. And I mean especially if you be a man of faith, you if if, if you if you we're a man of faith and you didn't have a lofty goal, I think that would really be the problem. But right. man, yeah, it's 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 definitely possible. It's super possible, right? Su- super, super possible. Man, I'm excited to see, you know, to 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 see what you know what 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 your podcast does, how you continue to grow it and, and, and shift it and everything like that, man. And you know, if I can help you out in any way, definitely let me know. Oh yeah, man. We're gonna stay tapped in, man. I, like I said, I appreciate you having me on my show. I appreciate the the genuine connections, man. So I, I definitely, I definitely gonna keep you in the loop on what's going on, man. But yeah, that's I got some got some lofty goals with this show, and you know we'll see where it can go, man. The worst thing that happens is you fail and you're back at square one, right? Yeah, that's it. True. But the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, but when you fail. Right. And some people call this toxic positivity, but whatever. But when you fail, you you at least know one way didn't work. Yeah. And you go do something else and you find so, another so, thing. Yeah. So you come in. So you're in square one with a little bit more information. A little yeah, bit more you, information. You, so, you, you get up, you dust off and you keep playing, man. That's what it is. You keep playing. All day, man. All day. So we go, now we're going to make it. We're going to make a slight pivot. And we're going to uh, now we're going to go into the going to the rapid fire uh segment where i just ask you a uh, few few questions and you know just let let you let you let your hair down a little bit you know let you <laughs> all right all right are you ready all right let's go i'm ready what's your pregame song favorite pregame song <laughs> imaginary players jay-z it's just something about something about the way he talking on that song i i play that one i play devil is a lie uh jay-z rick ross those two Big okay, Jay Z guy, yeah. Shout shout out to them. Shout out to them. What's your favorite stadium to play in? Cowboy Stadium was pretty live. Cowboy mm. Stadium was pretty live. Really, even with the you you like the turf? Uh, turf turf was you know that's whatever. But it was it was it was nice in there, man. That was a really nice stadium. That was. I I, I really don't like playing on turf, but just. Overall, like the ambiance, man. You know what I'm saying. And then I think the second one I would say would be uh, Minnesota. That's that's a really nice stadium. Uh, yeah, really nice enough, stadium. Fair enough. What's your what's your most memorable college memory? College memory beating Georgia 2016 on their homecoming. Oh, I think it was 2016. Dang. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it might be, but winning is always fun and memorable. So it was definitely that one. Yeah. Enough. Audiobooks or podcasts? Podcasts. What's your what's your top three podcasts? Top three podcasts. Obviously, Earn Your Leisure, Market Mondays. That's that's my first one. Uh I had to go look at my phone, but I really like uh, Richard Fain on YouTube. I don't know if, I guess you would consider that a, a podcast, Richard Fain. Uh, Stock Up with Larry Jones, he's pretty good. Uh, that's just off the top. And then otherwise, I'm just kind of watching like interviews back and forth. Social Proof is good. I like Social Proof. Oh, uh, shout out to my guy, David Shane. Yeah. And Don. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Social Proof is good. You, ask, you only ask for three. So I would say EYL, Social Proof. Uh, you know, I've I've actually watched a lot of Joe Budden when he's had different guys on. So he had mm-hmm. he had the employee millionaire on there, Storm Leroy. He had EYL on there. So 
he's got a lot of different people on yeah. there. So I maybe say those three. Yeah, shout out to him. How what's your what's your go-to self-care? Man, getting a nice haircut, taking a nice shower after that, and then eating some sushi, watching a podcast. That's a good day Come for on, me. Sushi? Come on, sushi. Okay, la- this this is gonna be the last question. This this is just for me. What so what's your go-to sushi roll? Uh, there's a place up here in Chicago called, I think it's called Sakura, Sakura and they got the, uh, the dragon roll and it's like a sh- shrimp tempura with crab, got the, uh, eel sauce, spicy mayo, spicy mayo. Yeah. it's got something else in it, but that's my go-to roll, but I really like poke bowls. I like, uh, mm-hmm. or poke bowls, however you say it, like yeah. when it's just the materials and the, and the rice and it's all mixed up together. I like those a lot too. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, before we go into the winner's circle of the week, go, Kari, go ahead and let people know how they can find you, follow you, stay connected with you uh, at this time, and then we'll go with the winner's circle of the week. Man, you can find me at KB underscore two three on Instagram, Kari Blasting Game on Twitter, uh, and then the podcast Business of Athletes, no underscores, no nothing, just Business of Athletes on Instagram and on YouTube. By the way, that's a dope title. Just, just in case you didn't know, that's that's a dope title for for a pod. I mean, for a business, that's a dope title. Man, I appreciate it, man. I need to, I need to, I need to keep going, man. I need to go get some trademarks and stuff. Put some merch out, trademark it or something like that. Oh man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock that down, man. Lock yeah, that down. yeah. Lock that down. Now, now we're at we're at the uh, we're at the winner circle of the week, and this is just the opportunity where I, I give you the chance to you know shout out somebody you see out here. You you feel they're just dope, and you think they're just really killing it in whatever area. Right. Um, so who who is the, who is that person? You say, John, I think this person is doing great work. I think you should interview them next. Who who would that person be for you? Uh, well, I got to I got to shout out Kirby Porter. I had her on my show and then, you know, she has a show. She had me on her show. Man, she's doing a lot of good things for creators, athletes becoming creators in the space. So I would say Kirby Porter, man, she, she's doing she's doing some great things with the community. She's building um, a Moby Akugo. Uh, from a frugal athlete. Uh, he's dope. I really like his content. Um, yeah, man. And then just a lot of a lot of my mentors, man. I guess I guess you only asked for one, but hey, you can uh, go ahead, man. It's, it's whatever. It's your episode, man. You can yeah, play. man. Amal Yamusa created uh, Make a Play Foundation. It's one of my big homies, man. He's he's probably one of the best thinkers I know, man. Like he's real, real focused, real, you know, real tapped in. Uh, Keith Smith, big, huge real estate guy. Uh, Oren Burks, it's one of my guys from Vanderbilt. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's a lot of guys out here getting to it, man. There's just a lot of guys out here getting to it, and they'll, they'll probably never say that they're getting to it. Like they won't blast, you know, what they're doing out too crazy because they just so humble. But they they it's a lot of guys, a lot of girls out here need their stories told, man, because they're doing it at a high level. Shout out to them, man. Shout out to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, I gave you some good enough names right there. But I think yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Now, now we, we're gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this thing up and tie it with a bow. Uh, this is our dear student athlete segment, and this is just the opportunity where uh, I just give you the chance to share a final thought uh, with a current student athlete. So please feel free to to take us home, Kari. Take us home, man. Current student athlete. Always keep priority number one, priority number one. Um, and that for me, that would be my faith, right? So I don't know if that's the case for you, but outside of that, you're in school to get a great education. You're in a great position as a student athlete. Use that, use that platform that you have, get that education and set yourself up for your future. Stay focused and no matter what happens, no matter what adversity you hit, you must keep going. Just keep going. Just keep fighting. Keep Keep going, you know, keep playing the game, man. Just keep playing it. Boom. And there it is, folks. There it is. Man, we just we, we just just had an amazing interview with, with Mr. Kari, uh, Blasting Game. Man, shout out to him. Uh, thanks for all, all the work that you do. Man, you got, you got the Business of Athletes platform. Y'all go tap in because he's doing some amazing interviews and doing some amazing stuff over there. I'm going to have the link definitely down in the show notes so y'all can tap in. But family, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Till next time, peace. God bless. I appreciate you, man.